Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna be diving into my Swift Playgrounds game that I've been building called Shape Game. It's really just a basic game, proof of concept on how Swift Playgrounds will work as a platform for developing. So I've been using my iPad here to develop this game. And yeah, so last time we left off, the game was just getting started. We've got this three by three grid of numbers being populated with uh, different colored shapes. And that's basically what it is. We have a target, uh, a target shape and a number of moves. So here it wants a 10 orange square that doesn't exist. So we have to restart the game. It wants a three and a blue square. It has one, we can do that. Woohoo! That's what we have so far, it's not much. Let's see what we can do to make it better today. So I think what I'm gonna do is start in my main menu area. This is our content view, this is what we see. And I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit, rearrange some things and add some things just to make it look a little bit more like a game. The first thing that we, we, we're gonna do here is, let's see, we're gonna get rid of this uh, geometry reader. This was actually something that was part of the very first uh, iteration of this and we actually don't need it. It's something I kind of forgot to remove from last time. So we'll get rid of that. I'm gonna add a spacer above this uh, V stack here. Let's actually create our timer so that we can start counting down. Because I think having a timer will be fun. It will add some tension to the game, some something for the player to kind of fight against, right? For now, what I'm gonna do is just create another V-stack here to start with. And we're gonna have this one be a dot center alignment. We need to have alignment dot center. And then um, inside this V-stack, we will have a text that will be time. We'll have to create a variable so this will be like a variable and and it will just count down. So we'll work on that in a second, but that's gonna be our, our timer. Uh, let's make it nice and big. So we'll do font uh, dot system size and uh, we'll go with the size of 40. And then maybe just a little bit of padding from the top so that it's not hidden behind the, uh, the notch on the iPhone there. So we'll do um, dot top 50. That's nice. And now the other, uh, another component that I want to do is down the bottom here, we have target shape and moves. I want to actually have the shape um, and the color and the number be um, shown uh, to the player rather than, rather than text. I want it to, if, if the target is a uh, orange, circle with the number three, I want there to be an orange circle with the number three as your target. So I think to do that, you know, we're gonna need, we're gonna need to create some more variables here and we're gonna need to do some refactoring of our code uh, to begin with. But to get started with this and just lay it out, what I wanna do is create a Z stack. And inside this, we're gonna have uh, an image, which it's gonna be, one of the images that are in our game. So it's gonna be one of these images as the bottom of our Z stack. So uh, just for a placeholder, let's do a blue circle for now. And then uh, we'll obviously have to dynamically change this, um, you know, when it, when we need it, when, when it comes to the game. So uh, this is gonna be resizable and uh, we're gonna do a frame. We'll do uh, of, 50, height 50. Inside the Z stack, we're also gonna have a text um, that's gonna layer on top of it. So the way Z stacks work is the first item is the bottom and then you, as you go down your Z stack, those get layered on top of each other. Um, so we're gonna have this be the value of the target. So we could use that right now as is. So that's uh, game data dot target value. So eight, eight makes sense, right? So now we would be looking for, like it wants a blue square, but like eventually we'll have this all change and hook up so that it, it works correctly. So I think that's good, which means that we can actually uh, get rid of this, this V stack on the bottom here because we don't need this anymore. And I'm gonna get rid of this spacer as well because that's a little too much space between everything. We probably don't need this one either. Oh, no, we do need that one. That looks terrible. 
All right, let's add a spacer down the bottom here. All right, that will, that will work for now. Maybe I can get rid of this. There we go. I, I think that looks okay. Uh, we'll, we'll obviously be cleaning this up uh, as development goes on, but this is kind of like a, a start. So that's the general idea. Now we need to hook up, we need to create our timer, we need to refactor some code so that we can display the, um, the circle here and uh, the color. And then we need to hook up the code so that you know everything kind of works properly. So let's jump into the uh, level one and start doing some of that. Actually, before we do that, we actually need to create a class, a uh, game timer. So this is gonna be our game timer class. Game timer, it's gonna be a label node. We're gonna have a variable for total seconds, which is a float. We need an update. So inside this, uh, we have something to convert, convert remaining time to an int. So this is a let time left integer equals int total seconds. We may or may not need that. Um, again, this is like, this is reused code. So I, I just copy and pasted this from my old game and uh, we'll use what we need and what we don't need, maybe refactor out later. Um, but this is how I built my other one. So this is uh, update label text. It's gonna be a string, time left integer. And then we have another function here, restart timer, duration, c2 float. Um, so when we restart the timer, we're gonna remove all actions total seconds equals duration and then we have this simple um, sk action dot wait for duration 0.1 action so we're gonna run a code block self dot total seconds minus equals 0 0.1 and then um, sequence equals sk action dot sequence uh, and inside here we're going to have wait finish self dot run sk action repeat forever sk And that's all we need to get this up and running. So now we can hop into level one, clear up some of this uh, dead space here. So we're gonna need to create a new binding, which is gonna be a timer count. And this is gonna be a CG float. We'll have to you know, make sure we have this added here, timer count, binding, CG float. Okay, and then we come down here, timer count equals timer count. Uh, we're also gonna need to create a variable here called um, var level timer start. And we'll set that to 30.0. That will give us our start time every time we restart the timer. Uh, we can use that. So then inside of the did move to view, we're gonna add timer equals game timer. And we don't have the timer yet. That's because that's up here. Bar timer equals game timer. And we also need to make sure that we um, capture this uh, timer count. We need to make sure that that's in game data. So we need a, a uh, published var timer count is a CG float. And this is uh, 30. All right, and then we also are gonna need to have that inside of the main menu. We need to have, get rid of this. We need to have timer count. And there's gonna be a game data dot, what did I call that? Game, game data dot timer count. 
And we need a uh, one of those. If we come down to here, we should be able to say uh, uh, self dot game data dot timer count. All right, so it's there. We have that, but it's not updating, and that's because uh, we need to make sure that we add it to the game. Let's finish that aspect. So we have timer equals game timer, uh, but we've never added it. So add child timer and then timer dot restart timer duration level timer start. Um, okay. And finally, we need to inside of, do we have an update function yet? No. Add an update. So inside our update function, we're going to do timer count equals timer dot total seconds. Now it's counting down, but it has all these extra zeros. To fix that, we just need to do specifier and then um, it's this percent dot one F. And there we go. So now we have it counting down timer. Um, to one decimal place, which is cool. It adds a little bit of tension. Uh, so next up, we're gonna um, actually refactor some code a little bit because right now, if we go to level uh, one, you can see right now we have shapes and shapes actually contains the color and the shape. What we wanna do is have it contain just the shape and then we're gonna have um, another variable array here, let colors, equal or let's see so we're gonna have let let colors equal um and this is gonna be right now we just have blue and orange and we just have uh for shapes we just have circle and square so obviously it's gonna break some of our code because it doesn't know what a circle is but we'll fix this in a second so those are our two arrays now what we need to do is collect these things and in order to do that we're going to need to actually create another binding so right now we have just target value we have target color uh, we're going to need uh, an at binding for our target shape and that's going to be a string and then um, of course we'll need to add that to this list. I'm gonna put it next to the target color. So we'll do target shape binding string. We need to add that here. So target shape, this target shape, and that will need to be in here as well. At published var target shape string empty and in main menu we need to make sure we have that here target shape game data dot target shape okay so now we have our shape is is a target so we can do that and um, inside of level one we have our colors and our shape separate but now we need to figure out how to get these back into pictures. So right now what we're doing is we're creating, um, so we're letting our texture string equal a random, get random shape. But what we're actually gonna need to do is uh, also get, um, get random color, and that's gonna be a string. Uh, let random color equal colors random element, return random color. Um, all right, so now we're returning random color, random shape. So now what we can do is up in, up here in this while statement, we're gonna um, change this to um, random shape. Before that we'll do let random color equal get random color and then let um, texture string equal, basically we're just gonna add these together. So we're gonna let our texture string equal random color plus random shape. And now they're all there because 
We're basically adding the strings together, but we separate them out because now we can use that as um, each, each of these components are separate now. So now we can target just the color or just the shape rather than before where we had to really target just the image itself. So we get a little bit more flexibility now. Uh, next up, we need to address this because right now this this is not the right um, display. So it's it's a three. We know it's a three, but it's it's always going to be a circle because we hard coded that right. So here, uh, blue circle. Right now, the way we're doing this is we're setting our target color to get a random shape, and get a random shape. If you remember, was originally just um, the name of the the image that was chosen, so a random element. What we're actually gonna do is change this a little bit because that's not really what we wanna do. I'm gonna break this out into a separate function. Well, you'll see. So I'm gonna get rid of that and uh, I'm gonna actually move it to the bottom of this. So we get uh, random or get player targets and we will create this here, function get player targets. And this is just going to get all of the targets that the player needs. The way this is going to work is um, we're going to have if uh, shapes on board dot count equals one, which uh, we need to actually create shapes on board. And that is a new array. So we're going to have to create a few things here. Um, so these are variable shapes on board equals and this is going to be an array of shape classes so basically anything that's a shape class we're going to also want to probably track values on board which is going to be an array of integers um, and we need a variable called shape index to track um, where the like a random number basically in the shape i think that's all we need to get this working all right so now we have if shape on shapes on board dot count equals one but before we do this we need to actually add our shapes to that so um when a shape is created so when a shape is created here what in this in this grid position here just before we add the shape we're gonna do shapes on board dot append and we're going to do shape and then values on board dot append we'll do shape dot value that way we can track these now we know where they are so inside of this uh function here for get player targets we're going to first make sure that there's at least one if not we'll return which means that the array is uh, empty uh if and then we're going to do a shape index equals an integer dot random. And we're going to do in one to shapes on board dot count minus one. So that will give us a random number between however many shapes are on board, one and however many shapes are on board. So now we can create a target shape which will be uh, shapes on board and we're going to do shape index. So at whatever random index that is, and then we're going to get the shape for that color and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, that's not a shape color. That's going to be a shape shape, which doesn't exist yet. Uh, target color is going to equal shapes on board at shape index dot shape color and target value is going to equal the shape on board at this index and that's going to be target value. So now we have our shape color, our shape value, and we're going to create a shape shape in a second. We're going to do that in the shape class. All right, so let's create a uh, shape shape and that's going to be part of shape class. So right now we have a shape color, which is a string. We're gonna need our shape, shape, which is gonna also be a string. That's gonna equal a blank string here. Um, 
And then we have to come down here and say shape, shape equals, and this is going to be square as a default value. This is going to be blue. And that's all we need to do for, for this, to set this up. And then when we create the shape in level one, so up here, okay, so when, when we create the shape here, instead of texture string here, we're going to do a uh, shape. Uh, this is actually color. So this is whatever random color is, and we're going to let uh, shape dot shape shape is going to be equal to a random shape. So now we have all the information associated with those things. We have our target. So now in um, the main menu, instead of blue circle here, we can have game data dot target color plus game data dot target shape. We have a four circle. If we click it, it goes away. Um, and now we just need to figure out what to do next, right? So that's going to be part of the uh, shape clicked function, which is in here. What I'm going to do is actually We'll get rid of what we have right now. And we're going to do a completely different um, thing for when we when we click on a shape. So if target shape equals shape dot shape shape and target color equals shape dot shape color. Let's see, do we have... Uh, we need a second equals there. So target shape equals shape dot shape shape and target color equals shape dot shape color. Okay, so if we have this, we're gonna do a shape dot remove from parent. So we're gonna remove the shape we just clicked on. We're gonna do shapes on board dot remove at shape index and then get player target so we're going to get another target for us to pick and then if it's not that that means that we didn't match i don't know here yet so if basically if the target shape if the shape and the color match so um they match right Maybe we want to add one more thing here. E and shape.value equals target value. So now we need a five square. That's that one. We need a two. That's a circle. See, this won't do anything. This won't do anything. That does something. Two square, five, circle, three, one, one, three, two. That's good enough for now. I mean, it's not a game. There's, there needs to be like points. There needs to be uh, a reason to like a, a challenge. Right now, you're just kind of matching this with what's on the board. Not hard, but it's something. It's better than it was before because sometimes you would be presented a board and you couldn't do anything. You had to restart. So that's where I'm at right now. If you have ideas for what you want to see this game become, let me know in the comments, and I'd be happy to try and make that work. And if you're enjoying this uh, series so far, don't forget to uh, click that like button. It does actually help you to recommend this to more people. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.